All right, so I've now started Nuke, and uh, Nuke is uh, the main application for visual effects compositing. So if you are trying to become a compositor to work in visual effects movies, you want to learn Nuke. It's an amazing piece of software, and uh, most of the work that we do in visual effects is today at least based on the Nuke work. So let's see what does Nuke have in terms of exposure check. Let's uh, uh, right click here in one of the tabs and in the windows you will see that there is new scope and there is histogram, waveform and vector. So let's take a look at these things here. And let me open all three of them. There we go. And obviously are all black because there is no nothing in here. So let me read the something here. Oh. And let's view this. So here we have our scopes. The scopes are basically the tools that allow you to uh, double check the exposure and the colors of your images. And now I've loaded this and you see that uh, Nuke has loaded the scopes here. And it's very interesting because you can actually see here in the waveform, which I will explain you in one second, what's happening in the image. And this is the histogram compared to the waveform. This is the vector scope, which is mostly used for color images. So in this case, we don't really need it, but I wanted to show you, I'll show you with a color image as well. So the histogram, we have already seen it in Photoshop and it works the same way in every image. From left to right, you have black to white. And then from bottom to the top, you have uh, the specific pixel that uh, have that uh, uh, gradation, that uh, gray tone. Uh, now, the waveform works a little bit differently in the way that the image is actually read from left to right. So it's not taking into account the gradient from black to white on the X axis, on the horizontal axis, but it's taking into account the actual image itself. And you can understand that this is really powerful because it gives you uh, a clear indication of which area of the image is measuring clear in relative terms because you will see that when there is color it's more difficult to read this waveform but uh, i can tell you right away that this uh, uh, part of the waveform corresponds to these these parts of the waveform correspond to this and actually i can even overlap that in a way that basically sort of matches the width of this panel there we go these values are pretty much al uh, aligned uh, to these areas of the waveform and you can see that this scale here is the scale at which each uh, part of the image is and is measured in IRE. If you remember from the previous part, uh, the IRE is actually measuring the voltage of the image onto the screen and is telling you that each of these zones has this specific voltage. Now. Now, this is a super powerful tool, and once you start using it, you don't want to use anything else, not even the histogram, because this is way more uh, powerful in telling you uh, what is wrong with your colors in case of uh, uh, moving images, in case of video. So the reason that this tool is so powerful is because it gives us a visual interpretation of the image right out of the box and we can quickly take a glance at the image and understand where the values uh, that is indicating are. Also this is telling us this is a 50% IRE which is our 50% gray and then your skin will be pretty much between 60 and 70 IRE. So this is really cool because um, if you open an image, let me open an image, this one. So you can see this is our image and this uh, is the waveform that you get from an image like this. Again, remember that the waveform is from left to right of the image so you can quickly see how it looks like. And you can see that my 50% is this and the skin is actually here. So my whole image is pretty much between 70 and 80 IRE and that's because this uh, baby skin is very bright so well, being very bright you have to expose it it has basically a brighter signal as a, a higher voltage and so is in between 70 and 80 IREs instead of the usual uh, uh, Caucasian skin which is a little bit lower between 60 and 70 but this is showing me that basically all the tones are well exposed and is also showing you that there is clipping 
here. So when you open um, an image where there is clipping, that's how the waveform is going to show it. And you have a max value and a mean value in a waveform, uh, which depend on the color space you are working with and the target that you are working for. If this has to go on the television, the television has a, a minimum value and a maximum value uh, different than, for example, if you have to project this image in a film theater. As uh, with everything we have said, uh, we have to always take into account what is the output of our images. Uh, if you want to print this image, as we said uh, for Photoshop regarding the papers, you might have a different white point and black point because the paper cannot reproduce those tones, uh, those, that bright white or the dark black. And so you have to adjust the image for that. We will see that in different videos as well. So again, another very useful tool here. Now this is a scope, but in Nuke you can always uh, uh, go in there and uh, type histogram, and you can actually uh, have a node that is uh, uh, editable, so you can adjust this. As you can see, there is a spike. Let me close this. There is a spike here, which is the white, and then you have the same controls that you had in Photoshop. So you have the black range, the white range, and then you have the mid tones here that can change the contrast. And uh, it's interesting to see how the um, exposure changes in the waveform while I do that. You can see if, for example, I change the contrast, if I can click the right tick, you can see that the waveform goes down and down and down and down the skin is pretty much uh, underexposed. And then you can go higher like that and even have this sort of balance. So uh, that's that's really um, a good way of understanding the image and uh, interpreting the image. Uh, the waveform is my favorite instrument to actually measure the exposure and check my values in a sequence of images or even in a single images. Uh, most of the time when I work in editing and I have to add the uh, images. Um, if I'm in Photoshop, I just use the uh, histogram or in Lightroom as well. But whenever I have a sequence of images, there is nothing better than the waveform. The vector scope is basically telling us uh, how much color we have um, for each color of the spectrum. For example, uh, there is yellow here, red, uh, magenta, blue, uh, cyan, and green, and is uh, telling us that there is a bunch of, um, in this case, cyan, cyanish uh, <laughs> sort of uh, tone, which to the eyes here. Let me delete that so you can see it clear. And it's here. And then we have a fair amount of red here, which is uh, uh, the skin plus the, this pink ribbon on her back. And if I grade this, let's say that I want to change the highlights, you can see that uh, uh, the vector scope changes uh, accordingly. And now I'm only changing the reds. So if I remove the reds, everything goes towards the blue cyan. Um, and if I remove the greens, we go all the way to the blue. So this gives you a visual representation of where your colors are and is another very powerful tool because it gives you the idea of uh, uh, what's happening in the image and you can also have in some software you can have um, uh, some uh, uh, specific uh, targets for each color space so that you know that you're not oversaturating the colors. Now let me show you what, the, what I mean with that. So let me show you what happens if I add a color correction, for example, and I increase the saturation. You can see that the vector scope colors change because we are adding on top of each color more. So the saturation is nothing else than adding uh, more value to each color. Um, and you can basically see that it breaks. So this is a sort of a clipping for the saturation. So the vector scope is used to check how neutral and uh, uh, or not neutral the image is. For example, I could decide uh, that I don't want to um, I don't want to uh, have the skin like that. I want to add, add a little bit of uh, uh, reddish to it, and then I can add a little bit of red so that the skin will look a little bit. Uh, uh, warmer in a way or I can decide that I want to expose the image up or down with offset and you can see that this is basically exposing everything 
equally. Before moving on to the next software, I want to show you one last thing in Nuke that is really important and is actually really handy when we work in visual effects. And that is the spot meter, which is this tool that you have here, clicking this little arrow. Right now, according to where you click, it gives you a f1.8 at 48 of a second, for example, which is an exposure value. And you should now know, if you watch the other videos, uh, how this is uh, calculated and what is represented uh, with these numbers. But in general, this is not a really uh, useful measurement. So we want to change this. And if we hit S, you can see that this opens this uh, uh, setting um, the, of the viewers. And you can change the center F stop and go to zero. And this way, now, if you go to zone five, for example, let me sample an area, you have to, you see that you have EV 0 0.2. It's not precise because um, this is a JPEG image, so there is a gamma curve applied to it. This is something that we get uh, into later. But for now, bear with me, I'll show you uh, more scientifically in a second. But what you need to know here is that exposure value, that's what EV stands for, measures the, the image that you're working on in zones, if you will. Basically, it gives you the difference between a zone 5, a mid-gray value, and all the other tones of the image. For example, if I go here, this gives you 0 0.2. If you, give, if you go to the next one, this gives you, 0 point, uh, this gives you 1 and so forth and so on, you see that exposure value changes. To show you this scientifically, I can make a constant, and instead of black, let's say that we set this constant to 0 0.18, which is a linear value here, and you can see that EV is now 0, so if I sample this area, it's 0. If I add an exposure node here, and I add a, a switch to stops in uh, um, the adjustment, so you don't want to use anything else but stops, and I do one stop further up, you can see that now, if I measure here, the exposure value is 1, and if I do, if I do two stops, the exposure value is 2 and so forth and so on, and, that, and that's because we are basically two stops away from the 18% uh, gray. So what happens if we go negative instead? If we go minus one, you will have exposure values minus one. So all the stop theory here, it's very simple. It's simply a number related to the mid 18% uh, value of your image. So if you have an image like this, you can figure out what's the exposure difference between, for example, the skin and the background. Let me open another image uh, uh, as an example. Useful, but let's bring this one in. So you can see here, for example, the exposure value is uh, uh, 2.2. So this means that we are 2.4. We are in zone seven and a half, which is pretty good exposure uh, for a skin of a baby, which is very bright. So you know that if this area is at this exposure value over 2, 2.5, you are at about two and a half times the uh, sorry, two and a half uh, stops over the mid gray value. And if you want to know what's your shadow like, then you are in minus two. So this is our pure black, which you see is uh, crushed. So it's telling you minus infinite in the in the in the box here. But that doesn't matter because that's how I wanted the image. I wanted the pure black, and it's also been retouched. But what is really important here is that the exposure of the skin, and you can see all the tiny details in there, this is a, only an HD resolution, is preserved, and uh, uh, it's in the right range. And we can also check the histogram like this. And this is the actual histogram of the image. There is a difference when you use the scope um, and uh, when you use the node here, the, which is due to the color space and the way Nuke interprets the image. So to have an accurate representation of the sRGB image, you probably want to use the, uh, the node itself. So this is our full histogram here. And uh, you can see that it's clipped in the blacks and the whites are still all nice and good. So that's to show you the exposure value. It's really, really helpful uh, to understand how the contrast and the ratio works. If you're doing an image, a 3D image, and you want to know the ratio between the right side of the face and the left side of the image of uh, the face, you can use this uh, spot meter tool. And in general, it's, uh, it's uh, really, really handy to work this way. That's why I always like to work even in computer graphic in 3D uh, with stops and exposure values instead of intensities that don't really represent much of anything. Um, so after this, 
uh, I think we can move uh, um, to the next software and uh, close new.